Hello folks and welcome to Ubuntu Plasma Desktop. You can see the version there. Uh, anyways, today I'm going to talk about um, GRSync. It's, uh, uh, GRSync is uh, a tool that is the graphical version of RSync. RSync is used, uh, it's called Remote Sync. It's used for a lot of um, different ways of copying things. Some people use it to uh, make backup tools for like TimeShift uses that to uh, back up your system files. I'm going to be using GRSync here to copy and uh, um, make backups of my personal files or Bob's personal files. Our user for today is Bob. It's just a made up name. Uh, anyways, um, I'm going to be doing this in two segments. Uh, I'm going to do GRSync first and then RSync with scripts. And I'll show you those scripts toward the end of this video or somewhere in the middle. Or maybe I'll even start off with it just to see what, let you see what they look like. Because when I use script files using rsync, I can do multiple uh, folders and to multiple destinations. grsync is usually one source to one destination. So I'm going to start with that video. And then maybe later on you can look for that for the rsync with scripts. Okay? I do encourage that you subscribe also. So what am I filming in today is 1920 by 1080 and the um, text is rather, well, sort of large and uh, it's about to get smaller. So adjust your screen resolution on your YouTube player accordingly by clicking that gear symbol and look for resolution. Uh, anyways, folks, I'm using NeoFetch as the command for giving you the display for system information. So again, this is Kubuntu 2204 Plasma Desktop and we're going to talk about GRSync. So Mr. Bob is our user for today as far as the demo is concerned. Now I'm going to use Alt F4 to close this terminal box. Alt F4 you can use to close any window in Kubuntu. Anyways, um, there's a couple of tools that I installed. So um, GRSync is one of them, which I'm going to open now and leave out. And I'll talk about this whole box in a second. The other thing is um, if you are going to be using USB or internal hard drives, which I'm going to demo, um, you can install several tools. You can uh, install like GNOME Disk Utility. And I'll use the hamburger menu. And you can install other tools, maybe Gparted, whatever. Um, but anyways, format your backup de devices. I have an NVMe, you can see that right here, and I called it backup. That's one device. Then I have a, and that's the power symbol, so that's connected to a USB cable. So that's a 240 gig solid state drive and a 16 gig um, USB stick that's formatted called USB 6. So I'm going to use some of these devices as my demo. All right. So you can use um, the GNOME Disk Utility or others. And uh, why did I choose FAT32 on this? Because I wanted to make it compatible with, with uh, uh, not only Linux, but also Mac and Windows. FAT32, File Allocation Table 32. All right, that's what both of these are formatted with. So I can unplug them and take them over to another computer, in other words. You can format these with whatever you want. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to open up several windows. And uh, I hope I can get enough of this on the screen, but I'm going to try to create three boxes. And why am I doing that? Because I have three devices to show you. So another window. And um, that's two. And one more. I'll try to get that one right underneath here. And hopefully these, I'm trying not to make them too small, but not too large at the same time. All right, I can enlarge the interior. Um, a little bit for you, but let me first pick the devices. So this one is my NVMe drive called backup. And I'm going to actually get rid of everything except the demo files. So, and then I am going to click this uh, USB 6 on this screen and get rid of whatever is in there. So it's clean. And this will become USB 1 on the last bottom screen. That's my, uh, I think that's the slowest one. Now let me find out which one is which. Oh, I'm sorry. USB 1 is the actual hard drive. So that 6 must be the uh, stick. Yeah, that's the USB stick. So 6 is the slowest out of the three. This will be the fast one. 
then this one, then this one. Both of these are USB connected. That's an internal hard drive. And it's an NVMe drive on top of that. You can use spinning hard drives also, or serial ATA drives, SATA, whether they're spinning or solid state, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna talk about GR Sync. So I'm gonna first start the ball of wax by clicking the help menu and making a suggestion to you that you look up GR Sync on the internet yourself if you are wanting to alter your basic options or advanced options or extra options. I'm going to clear these boxes completely from scratch. That was my last demo that I did on here. This is normally what you see when you open this box. GR Sync can be found in your software store. Also the tools for formatting your USB devices and internal hard drives can also be found by installing different tools. I'm using GNOME Disk Utility when I did these. You can use others. More importantly, let me continue. So all we have is about and our sync info. Now keep in mind, GR sync is just the graphical version of our sync. And my next video, I'll show how to use using multiple sources to multiple destination using scripts. So just stay tuned for that video. Browse source, browse destination, switch source and destination. All right, so what are you going to copy? Where to? And then be careful with that one. Simulation is simulation. It just simulates things. It's the same thing as me hitting that blue box right here. Execute is a run. Same thing as clicking that. And on some distributions, when you install GRSync, there'll be gear symbols. It's no big deal. Everything operates the same. This is the physical rsync line. If you want, I will show, I'll just use this screen down here at the bottom. I'll go to my, or Bob's home folder for a second and open up one of those scripts that I'm going to be doing a video on. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm um, just going to give you a sample of what mine looks like. So I'm going to open this in a text editor. So this is one of the scripts that actually runs multiple. So this rsync line is, I'm making a reference to the one in my script. The ones that are highlighted yellow. The rsync-a is the archive. This is an rsync-r just to give you an example of something like that. I'll talk about all this stuff in my next video, how to create scripts and uh, making even shortcuts on your desktop. But I wanted to let you see what the actual basic line of grsync looks like. So it's uh, rsync-r-t-v double dash progress dash s. It is a mouthful. The reason for the double quotes because I don't have a source and destination clicked. So let me do that now. Let's pick one. Something from um, Bob's home folder. Maybe uh, we'll do music. And where are we gonna send it to? Well, I have a choice. I have uh, backup and USB six. So I'll choose backup. So it puts the source at the top, the destination on the bottom. And it actually says that. If I leave it highlighted, it's kind of, you see that box just popped up. And now the rsync command line looks like this. Not that you need to remember this. I'm just pointing this out, folks. This part here didn't change. That's still the same. This part here is called source. And right at about where the music thing terminates, there's a space in here. When I have my video on the scripts, I'll re-emphasize that space because it's important that there's only a single space in there if you manually write these kind of command lines. Anyways, um, so that's the source and the destination is gonna be media Mr. Bob backup. So let me toggle this over here. Show full path and toggle that over. So now you can see that that matches with the exception of the forward slash, which I normally remove if I do a copy and paste because I can actually copy this line and paste that into a script. So I normally remove the last or the last uh, forward slash. And they did two here on this. And this is automated. All right, so let me continue. Preferences. If you're gonna make changes either in here or in any of the basic, advanced, or extra options, may I encourage that you make a screenshot? You can uh, find screenshot tools or you can download screenshot tools, whatever your favorites are. Just do a screenshot of the window, okay? So 
Let me continue. So the only thing left is quit and then sessions. What are those things? A session is just a shortcut. You got source and destination, hit the plus key and give it a name. You can uh, add a bunch of those. You can also delete them and import them and export them. And then you have the same shortcuts here. You have an add and a delete. And all this is is a dry run. It's the same thing as simulation. And it does that. Doesn't do much. Nothing's happening. Keep in mind, I had this original folder still sitting here. This is the actual run. So what it's going to do here, it's going to copy Bob's music. Let me do a third folder. Uh, let's create down here. So Bob's music is, uh, where is it? Here, sorry. And I'll get rid of the Hello World. And uh, these actually do, do contain music. So it's not just demo folders, just to let you know. I don't need that one. And uh, this one even has album art. Anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rsync music to backup. And the beauty of doing something like this is, um, I'll show you that in a second, instead of dragging these manually over, because you can certainly do that rather easily without using GRSync. But I'll show you the benefits of using GRSync in a second. So I'm gonna sync that up. And right now it's giving me a progress bar and it will copy the primary folder, the secondary folders, and then it starts doing the innards. So however many songs there are in, in these things. Okay, so I'm gonna wait till it finishes. I got a complete message, so that means it's finished. If I rerun this thing, it's not gonna do anything other than to say it's complete. And the reason that it, after you rerun this thing is because it's got nothing to do. It's already completed doing this. The beauty of using GRSync and RSync in general is uh, the fact is you, you're gonna put this device in here or in this one here will stay in the machine. But it, let's say I leave this music folder and a week from now, I added some extra music. So this is uh, Bob's music folder, right? So if I add an album, I'm just gonna use Hello World. I'm not gonna put anything in it. I'm just gonna create the folder only. But just imagine there's music in there, okay? But this is the only change that the system has made. So since you did an rsync and you, a week later, you added some more music or two weeks or a month, whatever it might be, as long as you don't delete that folder and this music did not change, you didn't alter anything in here. The only thing it has to do is, is actually replicate that. So let me open this up and let you see what happens when I hit that play button. It's not gonna re-replicate these. It's only gonna create this and this will be very fast. It's finished. Because the only thing it had to do was to verify that acoustic alchemy and acoustic alchemy match. It knows that by the folder name, it knows that by the file properties. If I altered one thing in here, it would sync it up. It knows that by the file properties. Okay, you got extra stuff in here. It knows a lot of things about your files. That's why this becomes faster the second time around. Because you've already got the original. Now I'll send this over to USB six. So I'll, right now I'm gonna do the same folder and click a different destination and play button, okay? So if I were to uh, go to Bob's home folder and add some documents, for instance, let's create a new, how about a text file? What haven't I used? Oh, there's test 9999, so how about test 123? Okay, so test 123 does not exist. Uh, uh, actually, hold on a second, it's still syncing, so let's finish that. Let me delete this. And let me first sync this folder up to both devices, or at least one. Let's do the faster one, this internal one. So I'm gonna click on different source this time. I'm gonna do documents and uh, do the backup because that's faster. And then I'll do the sync up. 
So right now it's creating that folder and the subfolders, including my scripts. But anyways, that's because it's part of the mix. And I'll leave this open. Okay, hopefully this is large enough for you. That's probably, I'm just trying to squeeze this stuff in there. Maybe I can just temporarily make this a little bit bigger for you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is create a document in here. Again, a text file. And um, I think I use test one, two, three, it doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, basically um, I had already replicated this on my backup documents. Uh, okay, so let me back this up again. So I have my music folder and then documents folder on the device called backup. My NVMe drive that's currently non-removable. Okay, so I added a document. When I rerun this document to backup, it's not going to replicate anything other than that file. It's done. That's what makes rsync faster the second time around because it doesn't have to recreate the wheel. All it does is it verifies that these folders and subfolders and files match what you have on your destination device. In other words, my backup drive. If it finds a file missing, it transfers it over as a backup. If you altered this A, let me, I'm not sure what's in there. All right, I'm going to hit, uh, it's just fat burning soup. So I'm gonna add some text in line one. So, um, okay, so as soon as I close that, that's gonna require me to save the file. All right, let's take a look at this file on backup. It's the same file, has the fat burning soup for line one. And now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rerun this because I altered this file. Now let's go look at it. Guess what? That was the only change made. I altered my text file and now it's got the new text file in here. Again, this is what makes rsync faster the second time around. It doesn't have to replicate everything, but it verifies the files based on the information on the file. Because remember, your files contain more information than just what's in there. It has other modification, access to created, all kinds of attributes on these files. Hopefully that was clear. So that's what makes this faster. So, sorry. So again, keeping the basic options, you're probably good to go. If you wanna be uh, adventuresome, look up GRSync on the internet yourself. Other than that, I will say, hopefully you found this informative and I will say, stay tuned for my next video on rsync and scripts on this particular distribution later on. Thank you for watching.